Good morning and welcome to News Views. I'm Judy Sue. Dr. Janice Jackson has only been the CEO of the Chicago Public Schools for a short time, but she has a long history with the district. It began when she was a child and a CPS student. She went on to become a Chicago Public Schools teacher, a principal, network chief, chief education officer, and now CEO of CPS. So what kind of perspective has that given her as she works to ensure that the roughly 371,000 CPS students get a quality education? Education. We are talking about that and a whole lot more with Chicago Public School CEO, Dr. Janice Jackson. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So uh, as we said in the introduction, you've only been on the job for literally just a few months. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot has happened that we're going to address. But uh, first of all, I'm curious, education has part, been part of your background for mm -hmm. as long as you can remember, yeah, probably, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is the lesson that you have learned right away about being the CEO of CPS? Something perhaps you didn't mm -hmm. realize before? Yeah, well, it was a dream job for me. I mean, at the age of 24, when I was a teacher, I said that I want to lead the Chicago Public Schools. Um, and so what's been most exciting about this is having an opportunity to give more students the opportunities that I had in Chicago Public Schools. And I really think that that's the gap that needs to be narrowed. I mean, a lot of our students are doing much better academically, but there's still an opportunity gap. And now that I'm in this role, I see my job as providing more opportunities for students who otherwise would not have been afforded those. Do you still pinch yourself that, that you are now running mm -hmm. the third largest school district in the country? Yeah, it is surreal at times, but you know, as I said, professionally, it's been a dream of mine for no other reason but to do more for more students in the, in the system. I started out as a teacher and wanted to become an administrator because I wanted to impact more students and now I'm in a position where I can create policies that benefit students across the entire city. And as we said in the introduction, you were a student, you were a principal, you came through the system. Yeah. You now have two kids who yeah. attend CPS. Yes. What do you think that perspective, how does that help you on this job? I mean, I think that, number one, when you make a decision, I'm not making decisions for other people's children. I'm making decisions that impact my own children. And I think that that can be pretty powerful. It's also good to hold me accountable and keep me honest. My kids follow everything that's going on, the good and the bad, and they ask me questions about that. And I have to explain to them why we make certain decisions, why people are asking questions about certain things, why do we see X, Y, or Z on the news. And I think it just provides the right kind of perspective, and it holds me accountable to a higher power, if you will. What has been the toughest question that they have asked you about running the schools? Um, I remember, I mean, this was when I was in my chief education officer role. My, my daughter in particular, who's now a third grader, she had a lot of questions when the teacher strike was going on, and those were tough. Um, but I explained it to her, you know, it was very complicated. And for me, that's really the approach I want to take as CEO, breaking down the barriers between senior leadership and the average teacher working in our schools every day. And, you know, having her ask questions like, what's going on? Why are the teachers upset? That was something that, you know, impacted me. And so every communication, whether it was verbal or written, I always thought about what will Tori think when she sees this? What will my children think when they hear this? What will, at the time, her teacher think about this? And that was really important to me. I want to get to a couple of major announcements. One this past week, that mm -hmm. $60 million in additional funding will be going to Chicago yeah. Public Schools. Obviously, some great reaction, but the Teachers mm -hmm. Union also came out and yeah. said that the money going to individual schools will mm -hmm. be, I think they called it trivial. Mm -hmm. What is the real impact of this money? Well, it is a real impact. First, every single school is going to get a increase for, uh, for each each student, which will help offset actually t higher teacher salaries. So I think CTU would agree with us that that's important. But we've also made a few other investments that I consider to be important. Number one, adding additional funding for special education, which is something that has been talked about, and in my opinion, a huge need. But the thing I'm most proud of is the additional money we, we're giving to small schools. Many of our schools that are severe, severely under-enrolled and experiencing enrollment declines due to you know some of the demographic shifts here in Chicago, they need additional money to ensure that they're giving kids a robust high quality education. So I was really happy that we were able to give them additional funding so that they can provide a high quality education. Some great accolades for CPS yeah. coming in recently. U.S. News and World Report just wrote a glowing article about the district. I want to quote the headline. Mm -hmm. It reads, Chicago Public Schools having a moment in the education spotlight. Mm -hmm. There was a separate study from yeah. Stanford University, yeah. and you know exactly what those statistics mm -hmm. say, what that uh, students are learning faster than other students in 96% of all other districts all in the country. Every 
district. And I think that's an important note. Every single district, a uh, public school system, not large urban school systems, not low income school systems. That's really important. What it shows us is that what we're doing is working. We're moving in the right direction. But I also want people to know that I feel like we have a, a way to go and we're going to keep working towards that. But it also acknowledges all of the hard work that teachers, principals and other leaders in the district are making. And more importantly, what our students are doing. We're trying to change the narrative about what it means to be a Chicago public school student. Okay, well, we're going to pause our conversation right here when we come back. We are going to talk about the new graduation requirement okay. that is coming up for 2020 and some of the controversial school closures. We'll be right back. All right.